Good morning students. Welcome to today's class. Amidst pandemics, I hope all of you are doing well and living a healthy lifestyle. Today we are going to learn a new selection statement, but before that we would also learn nested if. We had already seen if else statement. We also saw a multiple if else or if else if ladder and today we would see how to include one if into another that is how do we will do nesting. If you have not seen the previous videos, I would recommend you to see that first before watching this video. The links of the previous videos are mentioned in the description box. Now children, uh, okay. Now first of all we would see what is nesting. Now what is nesting? Basically sometimes a decision in your Java application is taken as in a real life and it requires multiple levels. For example, if the ceiling is painted orange, then you may also need to decide whether the walls are painted yellow or red. Nesting makes it possible to create multiple decision making levels within an application. You can combine all sorts of statements into a cohesive unit in order to make a decision. Nesting lets you focus on a particular part of the decision making process and perform the process one step at a time rather than creating a horribly complex expression. Let's see with the help of this flowchart and syntax. Now in this slide what is shown is a test expression. If it is true then the nested test expression is executed. If we com uh, compare it with the syntax given on the right side it means if condition 1 is true then condition 2 will be executed that is your nested test expression. So nested test expression is basically your condition 2 and your uh, condition 1 is your test expression. So when your test expression that is your condition 1 will is true then only the nested test expression that is condition 2 will be executed. Now if test nested test expression is true then the body of nested if that is your uh, where it is written executes when condition 2 is true. That means condition 1 and condition 2 sh both should be true in order to execute the condition 2. So the body of the nested if would be executed and the else part of the nested if will be executed only when the nested test expression will be false. That means the test expression 1 that is your condition 1 should be true and the condition 2 that is your nested test expression should be false in order to uh, in order to execute the else part of the condition 2 or the nested text expression. So if either of these conditions is not true that means condition 1 is not fulfilling at all then the else part of the condition 1 would be executed or we can say the else part the body of the else of the test expression 1 will be executed. In the flow chart children towards the down of test expression it is written false. When the test expression that is your condition 1 will be false then the body of else of the test expression 1 would be executed and immediately after it whatever is following the uh, else part uh, would be executed. That means after immediately after if whatever is a statement is following would be executed. So this is the way we follow in a uh, uh, nested if and this is the pattern what is actually used for a nested if. We can also create if loops without else also and that would also perfectly work fine. We would see all this in the further coming slides. First of all let's see this with the help of an example and understand what is actually nested if. We will take a real life situation. In this situation we have uh, the current situation of pandemic wherein uh, if there is a lockdown. Now children before uh, few days earlier uh, we had a lockdown situation and in, during that time only the essential workers like your doctors, your health workers were allowed to move out. So if you are not a health worker then you are not allowed to move out under lockdown. Or if you are not an essential worker, then you were not allowed to move out during the lockdown period. So if the lockdown is there, then you have to see whether you are, an, you are an essential worker. If you are an essential worker, you will go out to work. Otherwise, you will not go out to work under the lockdown. And if there is no lockdown, then everybody can move out and everybody can go out on to their regular work. 
so this is the exact situation and we i have tried to put it in the program to, in order to make you understand the nested is let's see how it works now in this program i have taken a variable lockdown and i have taken another variable as essential worker now the function name is movement uh, through the scanner class i have uh, input the lockdown number over here so lockdown number will decide whether the lockdown is there or not and i have fixed the value as 1 for essential worker so if person is an essential worker he has to enter the code as 1 or the number as 1 so both the variables lockdown and essential worker will store two integers one will store the lockdown number and the other will store the number of the essential worker if you are under that category now after that i have written if lockdown is greater than 0 now over here the condition would be checked if the lockdown is greater than 0 that means if there is lockdown 1 2 3 or 4 whatever it is if there is a lockdown it is going to check whether you are an essential worker or not so for that you have to enter 1 i have given it in the message so if you enter 1 that means you are an essential worker if you are an essential worker then only you can go out to work now in the uh, output slide which is shown on the right side i have also shown the output of this enter lockdown number the user enters one enter one if you are an essential worker the user enters one then it is placed you can go out to work now let's see the other scenario enter lockdown number two if lockdown number is two now two is also greater than zero yes the condition is true if the condition is true now it will ask you whether you are essential worker or not so enter one if you are an essential worker here i have entered two so that means you are not an essential worker because you have entered two so you you have to say you cannot move out so you cannot move out will be printed okay now let's see the other side of the situation now what is there enter lockdown number zero now zero is not greater than zero that means there is no lockdown if there is lockdown the lockdown would be greater than zero if there is no lockdown then it would be zero enter lockdown zero enter one if you are an essential worker it will you will enter one even if you enter two over here it will not make any difference because the first condition in the first place will be negative so it will not move to the second condition in order to check essential worker, worker because i have not put any check for that in the second part that is your else part of the initial uh, statement if statement so enter one if you are essential worker i have entered one over here so over here it has displayed everybody can go out now everybody can go out why because there is no lockdown even if you are an essential worker even if you are not an essential worker now children with this example i hope it is very clear to you how does nested if works now let's see another example of if wherein we do not give any else part now in this example children what i have done is i have taken a uh, two variables x and y and one variable has been assigned a value as 30 and the other variable has been assigned a value as 10 now i am checking if x is equal to equal to 30 <coughs> sorry and if x is equal to equal to 30 it is going to check if this is true it is going to check if y is equal to equal to 10 now if both are true then x equal to 30 and y equal to 30 will be printed so the output is shown on the screen that means it will print x equal to 30 and y is equal to 30 children if you compare it with the previous session or the previous video which i had shown you you would see that it resembles something which we had already learned before uh, i'll give you a second to give it a thought and then i'll give you the answer as to what we had learnt earlier to which it resembles yes children it resembles the and operator we had used the and operator before that and we had learnt if condition one is true and condition true is true then only the statement would be executed so all the questions of nested if can also be done with an and and vice versa so that means any any question which is uh, using an and can also be become nested if so into a nested if situation we can also include an and and vice versa so basically if x equal to equal to 30 and y equal to equal to 10 
then only system dot out dot print x equal to 30 and y equal to 10 will be printed. So, this uh, makes us very clear that uh, all the questions of and can be done with the nested if and vice versa. Now, let us see one of the more selection statement that is your switch case. Now, switch case is basically another selection statement which uh, allows us multiple level decision, decision making. It provides us with the menu or a choice driven programming. A user may have to decide many items A, B or C but is not allowed to pick at the same time all the items. Fortunately, we can create many levels of if statements if required to handle the problem. But switch case is an alternative to switch uh, sorry to if and we can combine multiple levels of if statements to make complete uh, complex decision making through nesting. Menus are one of the decision making processes that you will encounter quite often in applications and most real life decisions are not just between this or that but rather they involve shades of grey as you must choose one item from a list of possible choices and this can be done with the help of switch case. Now one uh, advantage of switch case is once you select a case everything is done in one go the input, the process and the output. Unlike uh, if it is not that uh, it is not like if like in that case you had to you know uh, you cannot repeat statements and it was advised to input once and then print also once but in the switch case once you ent enter into a case the input processing output is done in one go. So let us see with the help of flowchart. Now in this switch conditional expression what does it do actually it actually checks for the test expression what you have given over here. Now if the test expression is true that is it will either check for a character value or an integer value. These are only and only the two data types which the switch case deals with. Now case condition 1 would be executed if it is true and if it is true then statement 1 will be executed or a group of statement would be executed and then break. Now what break will do is break will take you out of the switch case and uh, display any statement which is immediately after the switch. In the same way case 2 will be executed only if it uh, encounters the equality with the expression as 2 if it is written or with the uh, character whatever is you have mentioned over there. So, in that case statement 2 or the group of statement 2 would be executed and then it will break. In the same way it will execute till condition n whatever you have uh, what is whatever is your requirement and over here there is a default written. Now default is equivalent to an if sorry else in the if else statement. So, if none of the statement is true then an else would be executed and in over here default would be executed for a switch case and after default there is no break. We Why do not we do write uh, break after the default because default is the last statement in the switch case. We can write it in between but we do, do not write it so because uh, generally we write it in the end and uh, after the statement the uh, switch case ends that is the braces of the switch case is closed. So, after that automatically the uh, next statement after the uh, braces would be executed. So, in that case we th uh, that is why we do not write down break after the default statement. Now, let us see with the help of example or uh, which we had done already earlier. I had given you this question uh, in the previous uh, 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 sessions. Write a Java program to accept day and print as per the following. If day is 1 then you have to print the message as Monday, if day is 2 then Tuesday, 3 Wednesday, 4 Thursday, 5 Friday and children I have written over here 6 uh, Saturday and 7 Sunday. But in the example in the solution what I have shown you in the next slide it is I have considered uh, 6 and 7 as week weekdays and uh, sorry weekends and I have displayed the message as weekends. So, let us see the solution to this with the switch case. Now over here 
this uh, program is actually accepting a day we could have created a menu over here now uh, children in a switch case whatever input method you had been using earlier is not being used now and you have to input the value using the same method either the scanner class or you can even use the buffer reader class to input the values either it is an integer or a character value through the buffer or the scanner class so character you are not aware of about but yes integer you are aware of how to accept a uh, integer using the scanner and the buffer reader class uh, for the character we will be looking into the uh, how to accept values as character in the coming slides so over here after we had uh, entered a day i could have created a menu over here that is why it is called menu driven programming a message could have appeared instead of enter day you could have written enter 1 for monday 2 for tuesday 3 for wednesday 4 for thursday 5 for friday and any other day as weekend so in that case instead of this message enter day a kind of menu is being created out of which you will be able to judge beforehand okay if i want monday i will press 1 if i want tuesday i'll press 2 and so on so this uh, uh, this is one uh, change you can try it over here okay after you have entered the day the day variable goes into the switch now day is an integer that is point to be noted over here that day is an integer now the day whatever day would be uh, what you have entered is compared with either of these cases 1 2 3 4 5 or default so if it is 1 it will print monday if it is 2 it will print tuesday if it is 3 it will print wednesday it is 4 it will print thursday and so on if it is 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or whatever it will print weekend but generally we know that a week consists of 7 days so we will not input any other day and moreover if you had already written a message beforehand enter 1 for monday 2 for tuesday definitely the person will not enter any other day because it is you are making the program more user friendly and you are trying to make it convenient for the user before giving him a message that this is the numbers this is these are the options from which you can choose so children here only and only either integer is accepted or a character is accepted now this integer is being checked with the equality of these numbers 1 2 3 4 5 children one thing here to be noted is that we cannot use ranges in a switch case we cannot just compare values as uh, switch day greater than 1 and day less than equal to 7 no we cannot do that so it works only and only for equality it does not work for ranges it does not works for other data types such as your floating point your pointer your other data types so that you have to uh, take care of while using the switch case now let's see another example of the switch case uh, in this example basically what i have done is i have used a character in order to input the value now the question the situation over here in this question is that if the person gets grade a it it will be printed excellent if he gets grade b or c it will be printed well done if he gets uh, grade uh, d it will be printed you passed if he gets grade f it will be printed better try again that means he's failed he has to better try again in order to achieve better grades than whatever he has achieved and if the user enters any other grade other than a b c d and f it will print invalid grade and then it will also print the grade in the end so if if the user enters grade a first of all let's learn how to enter a character using the scanner class now over here children after you have written system dot out dot print ln enter grade it is written grade is equal to sc dot next dot char at zero for now you just have to learn the syntax and uh, we will learn much about char at in the next class but uh, not now 
but for now you just learn the syntax that this is how we accept a single character using the scanner class and over here next function is basically the uh, function used to input a uh, string of characters using the scanner class but herein we do not require a string we need only a single character so that is why we write down we are writing down char at 0 that means character at the 0th location of the string that means suppose a Suppose in case a person enters a string, let's say I enter A, B, C, D, it will not allow me to enter A, B, C, D, it will only accept A and store it into the variable grade. So in that case, with this syntax, we restrict the user to enter a single character and store it in the variable grade. Now grade is what kind of variable? character and I told you that switch case only deals with integers and characters. Now a character literal should be always literal means a constant. A character constant can al should always be uh, enclosed within single quotes. That is why we have written inside the case and uh, A, A is in single quotes. We know that uh, uh, constants are also known as literals. We had discuss this in the previous videos now if case is a it will print excellent now let's see the output on the right side enter grade it is saying a what is printing excellent and it is also printing your grade is a this is how we enter the grade and the grade gets and store goes and store into the variable grade which is a character it compares with the value of case a now it encounters the same value and it prints excellent. Now let's see what happens when we input enter grade B. It is printing what? Well done and your grade is B. Enter grade C again well done your grade is C. Now children there is a change over here in grade D. Let's see what is it. When we enter grade D it prints you passed and it will print better try again and then break why over here break is written after f why not in case d and why not in case b and uh, why it is written in case c this has to be seen and understood now in case b if i have uh, if i see i have not printed any message and i have neither written break but in case C, I have written well done and I have written break. Now in case A children, I had written excellent and break. Now I told you the break statement takes us out of the switch case and whatever is after the switch case will be executed. So what is written? Your grade is grade. So that is why after printing excellent, it is printing your grade is A. In case B, it has written, it is written well done and now I have not written any and this well done is also written under case C. But children, case B neither does have a statement nor does it have a break. So it will fall through case C and it will print whatever is written in case C and then it encounters a break. So after it encounters a break, whatever it is written in uh, uh, the fall through case, that is your case C, it is written well done and it will print well done and it will come out and it will print your grade is B. In the case C also it is happening the same, it will encounter, it will check A, no it is not true, B it is not true, C yes it is true, it will print well done and it will break and it will come out. When it comes to case D, it checks A, B, C, it is neither of them are true, it checks with D, yes it is true, it will print you pass. Now after you pass, there is no break. So if, if there is no break, where will it fall through? It will fall through case F and what is uh, printed in case F? That means better try again. That is why in case D, two messages are appearing, you passed. You passed but you have not achieved better grades. So it, there is another message is appearing better try again along with you pass. So if you have passed you must try for better grade 
and your grade is D would be printed. Now let's take the scenario of case F. If it is case F, then it will print in sorry better try again and your grade is F. That means the child hasn't passed also. So in that case, it will print only better try again because no, it will not print you pass because one of the conditions is has to be true. So when it encounters F, there is only one statement written after F and then there is a break. That is why only one statement would be printed and after that it breaks and it prints your grade is grade that is grade is F. In case of an E grade, now E grade is neither of these grades A, B, C, D, F. It is neither of these. So if it is neither of these, it is an invalid grade and though you have mentioned the grade as E grade, so that is why it is printing your grade is E. Otherwise, if you would not have printed this message, then it would not have printed either your grade is E. So this is how the switch case works to the fall through case. Fall through case means if none of the statements is break is written, if uh, break is not written in the case, then the following case would be executed until and unless it encounters a break. So when it encounters a break, then only it will move further. Okay, let's see with the help of buffered reader class how it works. Now, do you know children how to accept a character using a buffered reader class? Uh, okay, let me tell you. What happens is, Okay, let's move back and see it is not coming. Okay, I would provide you in the description box how uh, to write down the buffered reader syntax. There is some technical problem over here. It is not coming uh, or you can see it in the next slide how it works. I have written the entire syntax over there. Let's see. Okay, it's come. Uh, the read function of the buffered reader class is used to read a character from the user. However, it is typecasted before using it as. Now children over here, it is shown buffered reader br is equal to new of buffered reader. This syntax you are very much familiar with. You know how to give the message enter a character. The main syntax is this char g is equal to brackets char br dot read followed by parenthesis. Now where I have written this char in brackets is what is your typecasting. This is what is typecasting which we would be doing uh, this much in detail later on. But for now you must remember the syntax how to read a character using the buffer reader class with this syntax br.read. Actually br.read also accepts a stream of characters out of which we have already actually we converted into a character and store it into the character variable g. So to convert it into a character, we are prefixing it with the char uh, keyword and putting it in the parenthesis so that it gets converted into a character and uh, then we are storing it into the variable g which is also a character. Let's see in the example. In the example, I have used the same example over here in order to explain it to you wherein except for or everything is same except for the input method herein i have used the buffer reader class the io package is being included over here buffer reader syntax is being used enter grade and then the char grade is equal to char in parenthesis br dot read followed by parenthesis again this is the syntax how do we how we accept a character as a buffered reader in the buffered reader class so this is the uh, syntax you would be using in order to accept a character using the buffer reader class rest the program is the same and it will work exactly in the same manner if you wish to try it you can try it onto your computers okay now let's see the comparison of if and switch now when we compare switch and if there are uh, various uh, aspects of comparison we will look into each aspect very carefully okay let's understand what is the basic comparison of if else and switch when we use an if else statement it depends upon the output of the expression inside the statement 
and a switch case will be executed and is decided by the user why it is decided by the user because children i told you we can create menus beforehand which which can be displayed in order to give a user a wider choice a wider idea of how to move about in a program like i gave you an example instead of day you could have written enter one for monday two for tuesday three for wednesday and so on so that kind of menu can be given to the user beforehand in order to accept the value so that is why it is written which statement will be executed is decided by the user if the user wants one then he will press uh, sorry if the user wants monday he will press one because that message is before appearing beforehand yes that can be done with an if also but we generally don't follow this with an if we generally try to avoid it and we follow it with the switch case so uh, let's see the next aspect that is your expression if a statement uses multiple statements for multiple choices yes multiple statements are used in an if else statement we had seen that we had uh, multiple if else ladder we had seen in the previous uh, sessions or the previous videos so uh, you can go there and check it out if you have not understood this because i have stated very clearly over there how to give multiple choices and how to use multiple statements for if yes switch statement uses single expression for multiple choices now over here by expressions means i cannot have values or ranges now ranges cannot be used in a switch case i cannot have uh, like in a discount question in if we had discussed we had if discount is above 2000 and less than 7000 no i cannot do that in a switch case i cannot have this uh, case 2000 uh, greater than 2000 or less than 7000 that cannot be done in switch case so i cannot have multiple choices in switch case multiple choices can be done only for the case of equality not for the case of ranges or multiple expressions testing testing is done for logical expression as well as for equality in if yes uh, we do for logical expressions if uh, logical and and or can be tested in an if else but logical and and or cannot be tested in an switch case i cannot have i just now repeated that i can, earlier i was to, uh, talking about ranges now we will stress uh, lay stress upon logical expressions like and and or i cannot have uh, case uh, two greater than 2000 and and less than 7000 i cannot have that uh, and or or operators in a switch case it is only and only for equality that it is being tested for if statement evaluates integers characters pointers floating point type or boolean type now children here there is a difference between evaluates and evaluate to now and if uh, um, if statement always evaluates into a boolean expression that means it always results into a boolean expression but it evaluates evaluate means it checks for uh integer also character also floating also uh, pointer also and boolean type that means i can write down in an if k if statement i can write down if character equal to equal to in single quotes a i can write down if character is equal to 1.0 that can be done in an if else but it cannot be done with a switch case i cannot include case 1.0 that is not done yes but if statement will always evaluate that means it will result into a boolean expression now i am repeating myself again Th these are two different things evaluates here means checks and evaluates into means results into so if statement evaluates to a boolean expression but it checks for all of these kind of values whereas the switch statement cannot check uh, any other value other than the character or an integer now let's move further and see other aspects sequence of execution in an if statement either if statement will be executed or else statement is executed now 
definitely uh, if one of the condition is true then that statement would be executed otherwise the other statement would be executed switch case switch statement executes one case after another till a break statement is appeared or the end of switch statement is reached now what is it actually doing is it will check for case a if it is not true it will move to case b if it is not true then case c case d until and unless it encounters one of the cases which is true if none of these cases is true then it will move to a default case if it is mentioned only and only if it is mentioned now over here in an if else statement if one statement is true then it will print that else it will print the other statement if it is mentioned again i am repeating only and only if it is mentioned if it is not mentioned it will not print anything like i had shown you in the example uh, in this uh, session in this video before wherein we had taken the example of x is equal to 30 and y is equal to 10 i had not mentioned any else uh, part over there so it will not make any difference because mm -hmm. it is without else yes but an else cannot work without an if i cannot write down simply else and then i can print something or i can check for an if condition again that is not permitted that will give you a uh, generate you an error else without if so that is not permitted the default execution of a switch uh, of an if statement if the condition inside if condition statement is false then by default the else statement is executed if created this is what i have told you just now that only and only if the else part is created then only it will execute if the condition inside switch statement does not match with the any of the cases for that instance the default statement is executed if created definitely if you have not created a default it will not execute any of the cases and it will not write, uh, give you any any kind of output so with this we also get to know that uh, neither the else nor the default both of them are not mandatory to be written in the switch or an if uh, statement so uh, we can uh, omit those statements else also and your default also if it is not required or if you do not want the user to display anything or any other message now editing when it comes to editing it is difficult to edit the if else statements if the nested if else statement is used children now till now we haven't done much of complex programming yes but definitely if there are more complex programs then it becomes very difficult to edit the nested if statements rather than switch case is more easy to work with as i told you earlier because once we use switch and we uh, press a case uh, everything is done in one go input processing output now i have not shown you any program uh, with input processing output but yes there are certain programs i'll be explaining it to you in the coming slides and i would like you to try it on your own and then we can discuss later on okay now disadvantages of switch statement is float constants cannot be used in switch as well as in the case like i told you i cannot have a variable as uh, in like i had taken day day was integer so day was integer it could be a character also it could be an integer also it cannot be a float i cannot have a variable as float in the switch expression and neither in the case expression i cannot check for case 1.0 or 2.5 etc you cannot use a variable expression in case i cannot have variable expressions in case that means i cannot have a plus b is greater than so and so that is also not permitted in uh, switch case you cannot use the same constant in two different cases same constant means two over there and two over here case two again case two i cannot have that we cannot use a relational expressions in case again greater than less than signs are not permitted in the case so these are some of the uh, disadvantages of switch case okay now over here this is your assignment fine now over here i'll tell you that how you will go about uh, write a menu driven program to do the following if choice is one check whether the number is even or odd if choice is two check whether the number is positive or negative now children here one thing to be noted 
uh, is that both the cases require a number to be input which is not mentioned in the question it will not be mentioned either in the board examination also it would be the question goes simply the same way as i've written write a menu driven program to do the following if choice is one check whether the number is even or odd where will the number come from we have to input it ourselves and in case two again number is positive or negative where will the number come from we have to input it ourselves as i told you earlier that a pro, uh, this uh, switch case deals with entire uh, uh, output uh, input process output of a program so in that case now we what you are going to do in this program is first of all you will create a menu driven program menu driven means you will give a message that enter choice 1 in order to check even not enter choice 2 to check whether the number is positive or negative this would be the message that should appear or something like this should be the message that should appear before the number before the uh, choice variable is entered into the switch case like your uh, day question uh, monday tuesday question over there the day was the choice variable so the choice variable has to enter into the switch case after you have input the value into the switch case what you are going to do is you in the case one you will accept a number again you will use a scanner class or the buffered reader class in order to accept the value there is no need to write down to create the object of the scanner class again and again you have created it once on top of the program before the switch so simply you will write down over here enter a number and then you will through the scanner or the buffered reader syntax you can input the number and then the entire program of even on even and odd using the if uh, part will be included in the case one and then you will break in the same way uh, in the case two you need to enter the number again why the number is being input again because that as i told you earlier that switch case uh, is a uh, gives you a complete functionality of the program that means when i will press one it will ask me for to input a number it will check whether the number is even or odd and it will give me the output also so the entire functionality of a program is fulfilled with the case that means like for example let's say in the next example as it is shown i am saying if choice is one calculate the bill for gold tickets it's never that children when you go out for a movie you will buy two tickets of gold one of silver and one for, one one for bronze uh, you always try to sit together whenever you go with your family or friends you either buy four gold tickets four silver tickets or four bronze tickets so this is the same way when you enter choice one so the um, uh, operator would ask you how many tickets you want so you will say four tickets so he will say okay four tickets are for 125 rupees each and he will calculate the total bill and tell you to pay that bill this is how it actually happens so this is the entire scenario how the switch case works so that is why in the case we will input the values again and again in order to provide the user with the proper functionality of the program so after every case there should be a break it is your wish it is not mentioned in these questions whether to provide a default or not so it is your wish to uh, include the default case or not now let's see the other programs now the other programs are also the same way over here you have to calculate the circumference of a circle area of a circle and diameter of a circle for this the user choice you have to input a radius as a uh, variable Uh, you have to use your own brains uh, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r area of a circle is pi r square and the diameter of the circle is 2 r so you know that these variables are being used and in order uh, in order to uh, avoid confusion please declare the variables inside the function and uh, then you can uh, instead of the case declare the variables inside the function uh, immediately after the function starts so so that uh, you do not avoid in, uh, so that you avoid confusion later on in your programs 
uh, i will tell you in uh, later sessions why do we declare variables over there why not in the particular case uh, we will discuss that in the coming sessions as and when we move further the second question the fourth question says calculate the area of a rectangle area of a circle area of a square so you know the uh, requirements of the rectangle circle and square for rectangle you need length and breadth for circle you need radius and for square you need side so these inputs are to be done inside the cases and the uh, object creation would be done outside the switch that means above the switch once so once the object has been created for switch you can uh, input how as many times the values as you want inside the cases so these are a few programs now i would like you to try out these programs and there are a few uh, objective type questions also which i would like you to uh, solve and try to give the answer of these a function to input a character using buffered reader class a function to input a character using scanner class data types that can be used as valid values to evaluate a switch case the keywords used to implement a switch case in a java language and if statement evaluates to a dash now herein you have to use your brain and write down the answer and then we would uh, discuss later on switch statement works for comparisons of equality these are a, uh, basically if you want to mention uh, the correct statement you can mention that for your own sake but uh, generally it doesn't come in the board examination like that switch statement works for comparisons of equality we can compare values using ranges in a switch case and else or else if statement in java cannot exist al alone with if statement so this is all which is uh, for this session today children now thank you children and if you have any doubts you can post it in the comment section if you have not seen the previous videos i would recommend you to see that first before watching this video the links of the previous videos as i mentioned before are given in the description box and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can get the latest updates thank you